we are here on the patio because we're gonna do some grilling. I have a new accessory to open up and a new way to try to make ribs. This is the SNS Grill Grate. I wanted to try these out because apparently they have little handles on them that make it easy to spin. Let's give them a try. Ooh, heavy. This is the grill grate for my 22 inch Weber kettle. Um, I liked, it's got the handles. I thought like, because people like are spinning it. I thought I'd like ball bearings or something under it to make it spinnable but I think it's just the fact that it has handles makes it spinnable. We also have a very nice, large section that opens up that is going to allow us more access to the charcoal basket to be able to access the charcoal basket better. I don't know where I was going with that, but that's what we're doing. Not a whole lot to this. We'll get this installed in the grill. And then we're gonna cook some ribs. We are gonna cook some spare ribs. I used to always do the three, two, one method, which was three hours on the grill, uncovered, two hours wrapped, and then one hour uh, glazed on the grill. Apparently, that's a lot. It is not a good way to get ribs done. My ribs always came out pretty good, I thought, but maybe I'm missing something. So I've been watching a couple of different barbecue channels. I'm actually gonna be trying a method from uh, a pretty cool channel called Chud's Barbecue. Really cool channel. I'll put a link in the description because I am following the Chud's Barbecue method for spare ribs on the Weber kettle. I'm gonna use my own rub and whatnot and make my own barbecue sauce, so it'll probably taste a little bit different, but I'm gonna follow his method and see if it really is better than the 321 method that I've been doing for years. First things first, I gotta go wash this and then install it in the grill and we gotta prep the ribs. I picked this up for $50 on Facebook Marketplace. You don't need a crazy expensive smoker to start doing barbecue. Those are the birds. They're fun, aren't they? They sound like dinosaurs. I'm just gonna power through it. They are not gonna ruin my video. Quit it, Fred. The daughter named him Fred. My current issue with this grill is the grill grate is shot. I didn't even try to clean it after the last cook. That's how bad it was. I just ordered the new one. Holy crap, it does. I thought it was a total bull because the other one has the same handles. I'm like, oh, I'll be able to spin that too. Nope, the bird family is here. Let me introduce you to Fred. My basic setup on this is gonna be, I'm gonna have a hot side and a cold side. I have the Weber charcoal baskets. On this cook, we are only gonna put some lit charcoals on the one side and let it burn across, kinda like a snake method. I have some cherry wood chunks. I'm gonna use a chimney starter. I am using a tumbleweed. So, super easy. The last part of my little setup is I use a little wireless Wi Fi thermometer because the temperature gauge on the lid of the thing, useless. I put this on, I put it next to the, where the meat is, and it tells me the exact temperature where I'm at, and I can walk around with this and monitor from inside the house. Pretty cool, I'll put a link to it in the description if you're interested in it. Has this little clip that you clip into the grates, a probe, and the probe plugs into the sender. When your coals are ashed over, nice white, looking kinda chalky, they're pretty much ready to go. So we can go ahead and stick our coals on the one side here. Let's close that bad boy back up. A Little bit of water in the water pan. Try not to light my shirt on fire. On the Weber kettle, there are two ways to control temperature, or two vents, a bottom vent and a top vent. I'm gonna leave my bottom vent wide open and close my top vent almost closed to try and get us to that 250, 300. Now the position of your top vent is important. You want it over the food because that's gonna draw the smoke out and over the food. So 
first thing we need to do, get these ribs out of the package and do a little bit of trimming, not much. So we are gonna basically cut a straight line down the edge of this rib. There's a little flap of meat here that we can cut off that would not cook with the ribs quite well. So we'll cut this little flap off. We're gonna cut you off right there at the bone. Very minimal trimming, but we've basically now turned spare ribs into St. Louis ribs. Now we have to do what he did was score the membrane. This is the membrane. You can pull it off, you get a paper towel and a butter knife. <laughs> but I wanna try the scoring method. So he just kinda ran the knife across it. And I guess what this does is, as you eat it, it makes it little smaller chunks and it won't pull and tear and you don't get a bunch of membrane in your mouth. And we're gonna cook these low enough and slow enough that this should mostly break down. And from here, all we have to do is season the rib. I found this stuff at my local Sam's Club. It was called Kinder's Buttery Steakhouse Rub. I tasted it, it's very salty, it's pretty good. Um, I wouldn't add any extra salt. Always check your rubs to see if salt is an ingredient in them. And if it is, don't add extra salt because your food will be too salty. These are pretty wet coming out of the package. I think the rub's gonna stick as it is. I don't wanna introduce any extra flavors, but I'm not gonna schmear. Let's flip these over and just give it a really good coating. After you do your rub, it's always a good idea to pat it down. You just wanna press it in. That's gonna help it stick a little. And always season the backside. Just because it's the backside of the ribs doesn't mean it should not have some good seasoning on it. I'm gonna rub this guy along the board on the edges, see if we can't get a little bit of that seasoning on the edge of the rib. That's a pretty good looking rib. All right, we are gonna put this on as far away from the heat lid on. Well, I had way too much lit charcoal in there, so I had to pull some out, reconfigure, and adjust the bottom vent. There's gonna be some finagling going on with this, but it's so hot, I need to get inside. While the ribs are out there smoking, we gotta do a couple things. I need to make a barbecue sauce, because I don't have any in the house, but they're super simple to make. And I wanna make some pickled onions. Pickled red onions. I just love them and I think they'll go good with the ribs. To do a quick pickle on an onion like this is super easy. It's vinegar, water, a little bit of salt. You can add some spices in there if you want. Let it go for like 30 minutes in the fridge. Really, really simple. The first thing we need to do is slice up this onion. We want some nice thin slices. teaspoon is if you want it. And then we're just gonna pour it all over, close them up, kind of shake them up. We are gonna whip up a quick barbecue sauce with just stuff I have in my pantry. A cup of ketchup, about a cup of pineapple juice, half a cup of white vinegar, We'll start with a quarter cup of soy, about a half a cup of brown sugar. The family likes sweet barbecue sauces. About a tablespoon of paprika. That adds color mainly. About a half a tablespoon of ginger. Half a tablespoon of onion powder. And the same half tablespoon garlic powder. That should give us a pretty good base. Now we'll turn on the heat. We'll just let it all combine and see how it tastes. We're gonna bring it to a boil, reduce it to a simmer, and we're gonna let it just kind of simmer and thicken up a little bit. At this point, you can taste it. Mmm. That doesn't need anything. We're gonna let this thicken up and I'll check back with you at the ribs in 
at two hours. We are right at three hours, still at 275. We've been maintaining our temp pretty well. It's time to flip them for one hour. Ooh, they're looking good. Nice dark, but not burnt color. I'm excited about this. These look great. We are right at that time to go ahead and sauce the ribs, let them sit there for about an hour to set the sauce, and then we're gonna wrap them till tender. The ribs are off the smoker. They look fantastic. Nice red color. They're super tender feeling already. I don't even know if I technically need to wrap them, but we're gonna wrap them. Here on our tin foil, I'm gonna slide it right up under the meat. Butter makes everything better. And then we're gonna go ahead and One little rib package. All right, I tell you, I'm a cheat. I'm sticking this in the oven at 250 because at this point, wrapped up like this, it's not gonna get any more smoke flavor from the grill. So it's gonna finish in the oven just as well as it would on the smoker. And then I don't have to worry about the temperature. And now we wait an hour. That's pretty much it. And then we'll wait 30 minutes for it to rest. And I finally get to eat some ribs. I'm hungry. It's been an all-day affair. All right, see you in a little bit. Many hours later, it's time to unwrap these, slice them, and see what we got. I'm mangling this. There we go. A little bit of a smoke ring there. Oh, that rub is too salty. They're way too salty. That's a shame. They're good. They're too salty. Not inedible salty, just too salty. Pickled onions of taste. Those are good. Spicy though, so I use the pina All right, lesson learned. Go light with that rub, with that buttery rub. What are you gonna do? First time tried it, never knew. That's gonna do it for tonight. The slow and sear, great, perfect. The s, &S grill, great, was great. It was great, it was great. Thank you for watching. Dad may make his ribs too salty, but dad doesn't do outros. That's it. Bye. Thanks for watching. Maybe check out one of these other videos. You might enjoy it. Give this a thumbs up if you liked it and you felt it gave you something. It would help dad out. YouTube loves the thumbs up. And maybe subscribe if you want more content. Or, or don't. That's okay too. You just have a good day.